got to go back on what we said the other day, which was 100% Vindigo beats 100% Pogacar most of the time. But yeah. Vindigo said he he rode his best performance ever. His and best watch per kilo. put a minute on him. Yeah. So he's got to only really, he can't hope that his level gets better. He's got to hope that Pogacar has a bad day, he cracks, which is highly unlikely, but it's possible. Third week of tour, you never know what can happen. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every day by Ketone IQ. We're talking about stage 16, Alain. Stage 16 from Gruissant to Nîmes. From Gruissant to Nîmes. Love that. Love that. Love all that. Uh, yet another hat trick in this Tour de France. We first saw uh, Binyan Germain, Tadej Pogacar, and now Jasper Philipson. Which, folks, you can just start to do the math, right? We've had 16 stages. Right there is nine of them. Uh, uh, we're going to break down uh, some of the teams that are that that. And George and I were just talking about. Like these are teams that came to the Tour of France for one one purpose, one goal. It's win a stage. And there are a whole lot of teams that are stageless. Uh, but we'll talk about all that in a second. And 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 before we do, I guess uh, Jasper Philipson. You know, perfect, perfect sprint, perfect kids, perfect lead out. Like if you, yeah. you want to be a sprinter and you're dreaming of a lead out and what that looks and feels like, uh, just go watch today. Yeah. I well, mean, it doesn't hurt. You got Matthew Vanderpool as, as your final man, but w- that's a dream lead out. Yeah. When you see a guy like Vanderpool in front of you, uh, your, your sprinter with a K to go, it's almost like no chance anybody can go around them. No. Um, he's going to take you to 250 meters to go or 200 meters to go. And then Phillips and all he's got to do is sprint around him. So we saw that they, they're, they're working together really well. Uh, they got the lead out figured out now. And the points Jersey we'll get into it in a little bit could yeah. get really interesting yeah, from yeah. an unfortunate circumstance. Well, just did. Uh, there's a there's a lot to talk about on the green jersey competition. Before we do, today's show brought to you by Roca. They do make the best shades in the business. Let's just be honest, right? Whether it's it's the chill and casual shades. Look here, I got these right here. These black ones. I mean, come on. I wear I, I wear these all the time. I wear them on the golf course. I wear them on the bike. I wear them walking around Aspen. I mean, come on, showstoppers. So you got those. You've got the reading glasses, which are. Um, uh, ju- 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 the best. I mean, they, they hinge, they've got the no slip, by the way, on the reading glasses, the, um, the lens is the same technology, the same lens is, is every other glass. So a lot of people sort of get a little chintzy on the reading glass the lens. It is the exact same technology. Uh, bottom line, Roka has invented a completely new class of eyewear. They're unbelievably lightweight. You're literally going to forget you're wearing them. And as I said, they got the best optics optics on the market, and they're also hand built in our hometown of Austin, Texas. The Move listeners get twenty percent off. Just go to Roka R O K A, Roka dot com. Enter the code the Move at checkout. <clears throat> also today, brought to you by Element. Folks, you hear me talk about it all the time, right? I, I like sweat. George has now uh, uh, has uh, has become a full fledged filmmaker. <laughs> we we now have a complete trilogy. You, if you saw the first installment, that was no joke. That's me climbing up uh, buttermilk, and you you saw um, you saw the evidence. The I was sweaty, sweat. I sweaty was, was disgusting. I was sweating. He's dry as a bone. Not too cool, but I have found a way to replenish myself. That's uh, that's element. Thousand milligrams of sodium, two hundred milligrams of potassium, sixty milligrams of magnesium. No sugar, no gluten, no artificial ingredients. Here's what you get to do. You get to try out the free sample pack. That includes every flavor that they have. There's eight of them. Uh, If you don't like it, right, there's no obligation. Just toss it to a friend. So you get your free eight-count sample pack with any element purchase. Head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move. That's drinklmnt.com slash the move. And be sure to try the new element sparkling. Join the salty revolution. Also today brought to you by AG1, as I say every day, and I mean this every day, it's about taking control of your health. Morning routines are critical to me, and one of the most important parts of my routine routine is drinking my AG1. I drink it before working out, right before making my coffee, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. It is a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers daily nutrients and gut health support. 
and check this out, is backed by multiple research studies, so you can trust what you're putting in your body. Uh, by the way, when I talk about these clinical trials, or the, sorry, these uh, the studies and the, and, and the results, they are posting those results online. So you can go look for yourself. Uh, if there's one product that I trust to support my whole body health, it is AG1, and that's why I've partnered with them for so long. It's easy and satisfying to start your journey with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash TDF. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash TDF. Before we go any further, uh, folks, Sir Bradley Wiggins has flown home. Yes. Uh, I know I know. if you watch George's latest installment in the trilogy, it, it appeared as if he was landing. That was actually not him landing a week ago, but Sir Bradley had to go, uh, what was it, testify at Parliament? Not testify. He was doing not like testify. Whatever, whatever motivational speech is a big okay, he, he was <laughs> Talking about successes. What, JB, and what, what's the word? Um, I don't know. Uh, he was speaking to Parliament. I mean, can we get a... a, a, a a reality check. He might come I mean, back. Though, said, huh? Well, so I, I did just a, a funny little thing on that. Um, he he came up. The, he was sort of getting organized. He was staying at the house, getting organized, getting packed, and he came upstairs. Uh, <laughs> and Anna and I heard Anna talking to Sir Bradley, and and then I, I she came back and I said, "What? What? Did he, what what's he looking for?" She said, "Oh, he wanted to borrow a suitcase." And I said, well, that's okay. That's weird. Like, how did he get here? Because <laughs> he got a lot of new swag. Oh. He yeah. got a lot of swag he when he was here. It. He got some new kicks. He got, you know, he's got a lot of stuff, new stuff. And so I said, oh, okay, well, what'd you do? He's like, oh, I lent him the suitcase. I'm like, you didn't want the suitcase? She's like, no, no. He says he's coming back in a week. <laughs> and I was like, I was wondering where this was going. I was like, wait. <laughs> You, okay, you lent him. The, he's coming back. Like he didn't say anything. Nothing. Didn't say anything to me. I'm like the tour will be over. But it, she's like, no, no. He just said he's he's coming back. And I drove him to the airport. And I was, and I finally said, I said, so are you coming back? And he's like, yeah, mate. I'll be back in a week. So <laughs> no he goes, other details. He goes a week. He left Monday. Well, no, and then he's back. Yeah. yeah he goes a tour. week of the move. Then he goes and talks to Parliament, and uh, uh, and uh, does other fancy things that knights do. And he's coming back to Aspen. <laughs> we'll take it. I mean, with open arms, right? I loved it. How are you adjusting to home life now that uh, Sir Bradley has moved out? George has moved out. Well, I mean, so I've only been gone for three days or whatever, four days. And the first couple of days, I get a text message about six oh five. You're late. We're up. What are you doing today? So I'm kind of rushing, having my coffee at my place. I'm like, oh, I got to get there soon. I'm gonna get there at six thirty. I get there at six thirty. He's like. Why are you here so early? I'm like, <laughs> the other day you texted me 20 minutes like before this and said I was late. He's like, well, I like my alone time. Well, I didn't mind like enjoying my coffee also by myself. I could have happily stayed there another few minutes. You know, so can we get a little bit of a, you know, consistency the, from now moving forward? There are two different categories of stages in every Tour de France, right? There are exciting days and days that are worth watching. And then there are boring days, right? Those are the today and those boring days, we tend to spend those mornings at the gym, watching the race on, on the TV in the gym. Um, yeah, but yeah, I was surprised you came over. I mean, we're, it, there was literally like, you eight, came with this look, he's like, who's here. I'm like, what do you mean? Who I else heard, is going to be here? I heard the door open. It was 80 miles to go. And I, you're right. <laughs> You were right. I was I was spending uh, some time by myself, which I like. I like just if you're just, if you're used to being the first person up in your house, you kind of treasure them. Oh, and I had yeah, that. And I was up by myself in my house, and I was very happy there. Yeah. I love but, it. Oh, I, like in my house, <clears throat> like I will when I get up, whether I get up at five or five thirty or six, like I will literally tiptoe and be like, please. <laughs> Don't wake anybody up. I want to be alone. Yeah. All the while, <clears throat> my whole family's like, there is no way I'm getting up. <laughs> like, they're like, no, 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 no. And hang out with that grumpy guy? No, no. no. You mentioned today being a boring stage, but I can guarantee you yeah. most of the riders were happy about today. Even yeah. though, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of teams have not won stages yet. But man, these guys are exhausted and wind could have played a huge factor in today's stage. And I think thankfully for most of them, they're like, okay, we don't have big wind issues. And for the most part, it was a, it was a recovery day. Day after the rest day, it wasn't too, too hard. Mm. And I think it was, um, the, the Peloton was happy about how uh, generally easy it was for the most part. Well, I could tell you who was not happy was Vinyan Germain. 
Um, uh, we, we've talked more than more, probably more than we ever have in the history of the show. We've talked about the green Jersey more than, more than ever. I, and I, I do think it's really special, uh, to have a rider like Binyan Gourmet in the green Jersey. Obviously he's won three stages. He won, uh, the first stage for his country of Eritrea. This is a huge story, global story. I think, uh, terrible luck today. And I'm not quite sure I was watching the finale and, and, I get it. We talk so much about traffic control and road furniture and roundabouts and little islands and all these things. Uh, just starting to see those first uh, as they entered the city and were going around these what were traffic, uh, huge traffic islands uh, or tra huge rounds of roundabouts. They look like chicanes and one of them cost him. So, you know, you, you could if you're just. If you just watch it, you think, okay, he, uh, Binyan crashed. He's not going to win the stage. But when it comes to the competition for the green jersey, huge points. Now Phillipson's closed it. It's now 376 to 344. I've never paid attention to the green jersey. I'm like, just George, just let me know who won that jersey so we can talk. <laughs> It's 32 points. And and there's no sprint stages left, so it's going to come down to intermediates. Well, that that's sort of part two and where it does get fun and interesting. Now you're going to have these uh, races within the big race. You have to, right? And, uh, and, and, and with that comes, you know, a whole different set of strategies and tactics in the way these two teams, because we're talking about two teams, right? You're talking about Intermarche and, and uh, uh, De Kunik, right? It, it, it's whether or not, I mean, how they want to play it. And uh, it's not over. Now, uh, there are no more finishes, but they're going to be they're going to be racing for these intermediate sprints. There's 20 points on, uh, that are available for the intermediate sprint. Yeah, I mean, but we've seen how well, hopefully Bingham Gamay is not hurt too bad. Mm -hmm. He said he's got right. stitches in his elbow. Yes. Knees all jacked up. So we don't really know until he wakes up tomorrow morning. That's one. <laughs> Secondly, if he's okay, he only really just has to play defense. He's got a 32 point lead. Say Jasper wins a makes it to that sprint, which is highly unlikely for tomorrow because it's way down the road. He just needs to follow him and maybe lose a point here, a point there. Who cares? He's not gonna. Right. He's not gonna. Jasper's not. The chance of Jasper getting 20 points and him getting zero in the next three or four days is very, very slim. Unless he's so, he just needs hurt. to go. Unless he's badly hurt. Exactly well, I was right. Thinking, yeah, he's got to get up in the morning. Yep. And see how his body feels. I, I I touched on this. I think in the first week. This is just yet another highlight of how tough cyclists are. If you watch the podium ceremony. You saw the yellow jersey presentation, the polka dot presentation, the white jersey presentation. They could not present him the green jersey. And then they then they have all, th you know, supposed to have all the jerseys stand on the podium. He wasn't there. And we waited, waited, waited. About 20 minutes later, he finally came and did a green jersey presentation and then did his interview. Well, it turns out he was back getting stitches. Yeah. Right. So he's got to get recovered from that and wake up. He still has to paddle. He's still, you know, he's still got to be able to, to do the job. Uh, bottom line, I mean, this highlights how tough cyclists are. And George, you forced me to come over to Todd DeBuff's house the other night and watch a soccer game. Yes. Okay? It made, 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 bullied me into watching a <laughs> soccer game. For, okay, first of all, they can't even get the people. They can't even figure out how to get the people in the stadium. All right. These, <laughs> these people are so misbehaved, right? There were, do you see the videos? Yeah. People <laughs> jumping, jumping over uh, everything. All right. So they didn't even have tickets. So there's like, they're no, not, throwing, no, they're not throwing chips at the players though. Okay. Like okay. The hold cycling on. Fans right, are. So, so anyway, so now the thing, so not only have you bullied me into going over there, it starts an hour and a half late. I'm livid, right? That's Colombian okay. style. You know, okay. always a little bit late. And, and then we're watching this game. They don't even score. There's no action. There was action. There's no, 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 no. Hold on. There's no action. The, I, uh, the only Kicks on goal. That's actually. Hold on. Liz has got there's, a, there's a nobody, soccer no, player's son. I mean, you she get, understands. You, you, you sit there for two hours and the score is zero to zero. What kind of fucking sport <laughs> is this? Right, I'm not done. Hey, I'm not done. When, all right. And then they, and then these guys, this is my, this is my thing with soccer <laughs> players. And I mean this. All right. I want to, I want you to hear me. Oh boy. And, and thank God we, we, we have these, are forced to watch these things on TV and in slow motion. Do you remember, remember the one where the guy pretended like he got hit in the neck and they go back and replay it and yeah. it's not anywhere near him. And then there's like a three second delay and he's like, oh no, I might get away with pretending like he hit me in the neck. Dude, <laughs> this is not a sport. Look at Binyan Germe. It's a All sport. Right? No, I understand it's a sport. It, this is not, I don't know how this is the biggest sport in the world. Right? No. Give me cycling. Give me hockey. 
mean, these guys, hockey players? Come on, man. The, <laughs> this soccer is so fake. Yeah. I mean, these guys got skill. They run around for two hours full gas, and they get hurt. And right. They get so then watch the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> they do that too. But Biggest also, sport but in the world. So here's, here's, okay. All right. Anyways, we get to the end of this thing. I know yeah. we're getting off track. <laughs> and it's zero to zero. And then they start talking about, well, the shootout. Right? Each team gets which, a certain which amount kind of, of kicks. excited you. And I was like, why wouldn't we just start with that? <laughs> I think that soccer. <laughs> kind of like a start. prologue? Even better. Get, get some I mean, we can have it. different, they, maybe at the start and the beginning. Like, but just it, do three of the little kicks at the beginning. So at least there's some action. I'm in. I'm, you, got, you got me in. And then go play, go run around for two hours. And if it's the, then we'll do some more kicks. Liz is not even paying attention because she's looking away. She loves no. her son, plays soccer. He's a goalie. By the way, that must be the worst job in the world to be a, a young kid's Here we go, mother Here we that, go, who's a goalie. All the other parents hate you and they hate your kid. They're yelling at you. We thought it was going to be boring. Uh, you know what? Did you see the images of the stadium after the event? <laughs> no. I went home and destroyed. watched Destroyed. Oh, was it really? Just yeah. wrecked. Yeah, it looked like it was pretty in <laughs> passionate, passionate game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but it will be I, I, back to the bike race, back yeah. to the Tour de France. I, I, I'm, I'm rooting for Ben Young Germain. And by the way, I like Jasper Phillips, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he won his third stage. By the way, also, it was his ninth stage win. Uh, of his career in the yep. tour is pretty awesome. He's still young, uh, but you got to root for Germain, and I, I hope he wakes up feeling okay. He's just got to get the legs moving. It's one of these things where if he gets through tomorrow, he gets through it all. Uh, he seemed pretty but, positive in the post race. Well, he always year. doesn't. But he al he kind of always seems positive. That's how he. Well, does. you would, wouldn't you? You're from Eritrea. Yeah. Like nobody ever thought you'd be here at, at the, on the biggest stage, and this is and winning. Uh, how are our friends doing, Eritrea? How are y'all doing down there? They're over over there, they're creeping up. I, 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 they're I, they're popping up in the YouTube comments a lot. We're we're growing. Good. Are we going? Does that mean we're going? I think oh, so we're still going. looking at it. Yeah. I think we're. Jeremiah's got a I slid into his DMs. He hasn't written me back yet. <laughs> so uh, uh, for any of y'all out there, maybe got the hotline, the bat line to Binion. Yeah. Tell him to holler. We need him on the move. We need him on the show. <laughs> Uh, so tomorrow we're heading to a very well-known area near Gap, which uh, you know is where your famous almost crash ride through the ditch yeah. down the side of the mountain happened, which we won't, we know is one, it's crazy hot there, and two, it's like never flat. It's super hard up and down, um, potential for wanna, wind. Are we talking about tomorrow? Well, I'm just saying we're just starting yeah, to so, head towards yeah. that area. Yeah, we can pull so, up yeah, the profile up too because the, the, pro, the couple of things stand out to me. This is... I guess I had not been paying attention. I thought we had two sprint stages. This is certainly not a sprint stage. And to your point, George, hot, yep. slow pavement. Yep. Uh, according to what we were seeing on TV, it's really uh, warmed up. The other thing that stands out to me right quick, I mean, look at the start. The start elevation is 85 meters. The finish elevation is 1,500 meters. So just call that, whatever, 300 feet to 5,000 feet. Yeah. If you look at... While the first part of the stage, you don't see big climbs, the net overall gain, this if you look at this, the entire stage is uphill. Yeah. Now, they're going to be rolling hills. There's going to be downhills of some of the climbs. But net-net, on slow roads, on a hot day, that is a hard day. One of the last chances for a breakaway, like a, just an early breakaway to make it. Uh, you saw today there was guys up in the sprint. That may or may not should have been there, but doing everything they can to try to for that one chance to win a stage. I mean, they're they're starting to get in desperation mode. Well, a lot of these teams that haven't list won. List them off. Yeah, list them it. off. I mean, there's and big teams because at the you know oh, first week we were talking about yeah. these small teams winning three French wins, and even if they're not a big team or a big budget team, they're just teams that you going in. You just said you know they're going to win a stage. You just want me to list them all because you want me to read that one team. But <laughs> Ineos, Lidl, Trek, Decathlon, Bahrain, Bahrain, Red Bull, Group Bomber, EF Education, Lotto, Israel, Premier Tech, Kofidis, Movistar, and Uno X. So some of these, I mean, Lidl, Trek, Ineos. Yeah. Decathlon, yep. Bahrain, Red Bull, France those are the, the biggest, uh, some of the biggest, biggest budget in cycling. I mean, they don't want to leave the Tour de France without a win. We talked about it earlier, like what it feels like getting to Paris. The riders are still, no matter what, they're still happy to make it to the finish. Crossing Paris is a very special feeling, but the team parties are a lot different if you don't have a stage mm -hmm. win. I mean, you go home empty-handed. 
There's a lot of questions being asked of the riders, of the staff, from the sponsors. Um, you know, they, they they owe it to the sponsors to, to get a win. So there's a lot of pressure going on right there, now. There's about half those teams. I, I'd do anything to be a fly on the wall in the team meeting in the morning. Yeah, I mean, tomorrow's meeting. Mark especially. Matteo and the Francis Dejou meeting. Yeah, he, his he his head might explode. Yeah, I mean, decathlon. Uh, even a little trick. They had bad luck uh, losing Pedersen. They came with an expectation of winning the stage, maybe winning the green jersey. You know, very good chance of winning the green jersey. He's out of the race. So, uh, and yep. same same for Bora Red Bull. I mean, they came with the expectation that they would certainly finish on the podium or, or in, in could potentially win. So things change and it didn't work out. But there are teams that came saying we have to win a stage. Yep, and. They've been ghosted. We'll get into some more of that action. But before we do, today's show also brought to you by Ketone IQ. And as I said at the, uh, at the top, they're also our presenting sponsor all summer. We often hear that fasting and exercise are good for the brain. HVMN launched the world's first drinkable ketone in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with improved effectiveness, taste, and cost. Ketone IQ delivers clean fuel that can cross the blood-brain barrier. How about that? 30% off your first subscription order, plus a free six-pack when you use the link ketone.com slash the move. That's ketone.com slash the move. Also today brought to you by One Skin. Check it if you're watching the show. Look at the, they sent me something new. This The, the eye, this eye uh, cream. You see this, G? Yep. I mean, I love that that case it comes in. Um, but I don't know about you, bro. I'm, 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 I was ready for summer. And I was actually, funny enough, I was coming from Austin. It was hotter than hell, so I was ready for a cooler summer. But nonetheless, I came up to Aspen, as we always do. We're high, we're dry, and the sun is blasting. Uh, it's funny when you say it in Aspen, we're high. Yeah. yeah Welcome the, to well, Aspen. Yeah, we are in Colorado, <laughs> so there is a lot of people that are high. Uh, but it's true. We're high and dry, and the sun is blasting your skin every day. Uh, but, you know, as we do with most of these things, we're looking for a little hack uh, One Skin has that hack. It is the OS01 peptide. Now, this is the one that targets the zombie cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and, God, I hate this word, sagging skin. Oh, I don't want none of that. <laughs> Scientifically proven to reverse skin's biological age at the cellular level. One Skin is more than skin care. It's about skin longevity, targeting the root causes of aging to help you look and feel your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using the code THE MOVE at oneskin.co. Oneskin.co, not oneskin.com. Use the code THE MOVE. Hey, George, guess who's back? Who? Our friends at the feed are back to keep us hydrated and fueled throughout this entire Tour de France. Mosca, Mosca. So here's the thing about the feed, and I say this every year because I, I do think it's an excellent idea, and I'm super pissed I didn't think about it. But uh, they've been with us a long time. Yes, they have. And I, um, as I, as I, uh, as I, and by the way, Matt and the whole, uh, not the whole team, but Matt and the team were here, um, what, like three or four days ago? Yep. And nice. if you hear it. Uh, nice it, dinner it, with them. Yeah. And all, ser all seriousness, like there's a lot of people going to the feed zone, right? Not just these riders. A lot of people going to the feed zone. Yeah. Mm. That's, are. are you talking about when I mentioned that they have planned feed zones or are we talking about something else? Like I they do have feeds. I saw a feed zone the other yeah, day. Yeah, I know. But a lot yeah. of these guys are in their own feed zones. And what are they looking for? They're looking for variety. And especially at this point of the stage, they, they're trading stuff with, yeah. with different yeah. riders. So they want to keep it fresh right yeah. now. Well, the feed is back. And for those who don't know, it is the largest online marketplace for sports nutrition. You can pretty much buy whatever you want. Yep, I love buying single single servings of everything, from whether it's gels or hydration packs. I mean, I got this awesome Musette bag here full of different products. Walk around town with that. Let me show you some of this stuff, y'all. I mean, yeah. gels. I got honey stingers honey, in there. Honey stinger oh, look bars, at that waffle. Marton uh, drink mixes and gels. That's all. Yes. Yeah. So they got uh, they, they got some pretty gay deals. And right? there's a snake in there. <laughs> Come on. Come on, y'all. Who okay, did that? Was that was probably Boltzka trying to scare Who me. Who put he, this? Are you kidding me? He knows I have me? a phobia of snakes. <laughs> that, Pretty funny, Boltzka. That's okay, good. Okay. I, Thankfully, I, I did not have a panic attack. But, I uh, had. <laughs> who did that? That's the, probably, great, that's the greatest thing ever. Probably Boltzka. But speaking of phobias, <laughs> and we're not done with, the, with the, speaking about our friends from the feed, but I do want to 
I'm going to go over your phobia in the next couple of days. Okay. And I don't want to ruin it, but yeah. go ahead. Um, <laughs> Moving on. Anyways, all right, great deals for all 21 stages of the tour, starting with the Tour de France pack. So, yes, George can count. All right, the 11 products, 21 bucks. It's uh, That's 50% off. Plus, you get the Feed Musette bag and a limited tour bottle. All you got to do is head to thefeed.com, and you will see the pack. And if you're lucky... There might be some snakes on there. <laughs> I can't believe both that's, that's a snake so good. By the way, I want that. Uh, 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 can I have that snake? That's like the greatest golf trick <laughs> ever. Right. Well, I know there are better golf tricks, but I mean, you have that little rubber. Let me see this thing. You have those little rubber snakes and you're out on the golf course with your buddies and you just put like put it in the cart, like up in the thing there. <laughs> Guy goes to grab his phone. That's insane. Look at this thing. Yeah. Oh, no, this is so good. Like you just set that or even sit on the seat. Like they go hit a shot and they come back and now this is, and you walk away and this is sitting on the seat. Panic attack. Full. You always on. tell me there isn't many snakes here in Aspen though. Or uh, we do, we do have snakes. Uh, we do not uh, have rattlesnakes, right? Okay. So uh, too high, too cold. Uh, however, if you, you, you don't have to drive far to get rattlesnakes. You can, yeah. if you go down, you got to get a little lower than basalt. Somewhere between basalt and Carbondale, you will start to see rattlesnakes. So, I, got, I got within a not. good, within a hundred feet of a bear yesterday, going up Owl Creek. Huh. Ran right across the. Like, I, I think that's so cool. Yeah. As long as it's not closer than that, it is pretty cool. Yeah, he doesn't want anything to do with you. Nah, nah. So we have some hard stages left, no doubt. We actually see a lot of the comments from the from the. Uh, rest day where Vindigo is not giving up. He says people can still have bad days. He also said, which we got to go back on what we said the other day, which was a hundred percent Vindigo beats a hundred percent Pogachar most of the time. But yeah. Vindigo said he, he rode his best performance ever. His and best watts per kilo. Put a minute on him. Yeah. So he's got to only really, he can't hope that his level gets better. He's just got to hope that Pogachar has a bad day, he cracks, which is highly unlikely, but it's possible. Third week of the tour, you never know what can happen. I mean, it is amazing because I think most people who follow the race don't hear those things. They don't, they don't go down the rabbit hole of reading those interviews. They're just, they're watching the race play out and they're saying to themselves, well, you know, he was in the hospital six weeks ago. This yeah. was a devastating crash. He had not raced since then. He's, you know, hats off. This has been a great race. When he comes out and says in an interview and backs it up with his own data, then you're like, well, first of all, that's a hell of a recovery. Yeah. <laughs> first, but most importantly, oh, my God, how good is Tadej Pokachar? Uh, yeah. Well, he's still looking forward at the podium instead of trying to hold on to second. When I pointed out that Remco interview, they asked, are you looking forward or back? He said back. He's protecting that podium spot. So the point is, Jonas might go for broke, even if it means blowing up entirely. Yeah. Rather yeah. than hold on to second. Well, he's still going to ride calculated. I mean, racing. I think they're gonna, there's a lot of, like you, like you guys said, a lot of racing left. Um, he's uh, confident in his form that it's good, but he's just got to rely a bit on po uh, Pogacar having a bad day, which we saw last year. I mean, we even saw this yeah. year where he ran out of energy, mm -hmm. made a mistake. It's possible, but a three-minute gap. We saw even today Pogachar was hanging back in the peloton. A lot of people criticized. Why is he so far back with all these roundabouts coming, with all these potential crashes happening? Well, he's three minutes ahead. So in his mind, and I'm sure it would be the same with Lance, like I'm okay losing 10, 15 seconds and not crashing, then crashing and getting messed up for the rest of the final of the week. So he's just – he. The way he rode today, total defensive mode, and I and I 100% agree with his tra strategy today. And in in his defense, when uh, when that was called out that he was far back, he, they the run in. Now the, the the finale was different. That got a little a little hairy, but that particular run in was a very wide road, so you can kind of give yourself some space. If that road is you know 50% smaller or even 30% smaller, then it's bunched up, and you've got to be in the front. Yeah. I mean, he, he could kind of float back there and just watch what's going on in front. But, yes, he's, he's got three minutes. Is the race over? Yeah, most likely. If you want to find other fun storylines, well, let's see how the green jersey plays out. I think yeah. that's ex I, I think that's super interesting. Let's, let's look at these teams that are surely, as we speak, getting screamed at yeah. <laughs> by their directors because, as we speak, their directors are getting screamed at by their sponsors. Yeah. Going, wait a minute. We're sp 
where where are you guys? Yeah. I mean, so the, I think that's a fun thing to track and to follow. And you're going to see the start tomorrow. It's going to be gangbusters. Oh, yeah. The, the neutral zone's already going to be going fast. I'm getting up early to watch that. That's for sure. Just don't come over. <laughs> We're in the gym. You can, you should come. I like, I do. There is this moment, and George, you've figured out uh, when you were living there, uh, there were days he, he would start to open his mouth, and I would just go, <laughs> Let me finish my coffee. Not, not yet. <laughs> and, and I'd then, be like, oh, wait, I got two questions. Tell me when I'm able to ask these yeah, two questions. And then, and then, and then I, you know, even would say, All right, just let me have two more sips. Let me have, the, uh, upon the second sip, I'll be ready to answer your first question. Yes. But so it was. All right, we've got Ventum Trivia, a couple emails, including a Lance Armstrong flashback to 92. Stick around for that. Uh, So we're giving away a brand new NS1 road bike along with our partners, Ventum. And uh, all you can do, what you do is enter every single day by submitting your answer. Uh, The question from Sunday was, what city and country was Bradley Wiggins born? The answer was Ghent, Belgium. Yep. Today's question, our boy Lars going deep here. (laughs) Matthew Riccatello is a rising star in the pro peloton. Mm -hmm. His dad, Jimmy, was also an endurance athlete. What notable event did he win during his triathlon racing career? I know the answer to that. Uh, JB, before I forget, you you brought up uh, the answer to that trivia question two days ago about Sir Bradley's hometown or where he was born, place of birth. I thought we did, a, and we teased it a little, but let's officially announce it. We did a, and we hadn't done it actually. We did uh, about 75 minutes. He and I talked. Well, obviously, we talked a lot over the course of the week, and and I asked him at some point, would you be willing to come on the forward? Which is really how all this got started. That was my original podcast, and I know I've been a little inconsistent on that thing for a while, but uh, you got to pick the right moments. And I think he's such a fascinating guy. I mean, I, 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 I pretty, I think we burned the house down. It was so interesting. Uh, and for those who are fans of his or have followed his story, um, there was nothing off limits. We talked about it all. So if you've, if you've tracked it, not just the cycling pieces, but the stuff in recent times, he talks about it and, and, uh, it's pretty heavy stuff. It's very heavy. Uh, but, uh, he was very transparent and vulnerable. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So that, that should be dropping, in the next, I don't know, week or two, but yeah, we want to release it between the men's and yeah, women's. Perfect. Uh, but I, I, I loved it. You know, I, I, I love, I still love doing episodes of the forward and I, um, but there are some that you come out of and you're like, wow, that was, that was so special. Uh, and you get an energy from that. And, and that was one of them. So, uh, I don't want to hype it too much, but, uh, I think you'll like it. I, well, I'll say what's cool about it is, <laughs> You know, if you've been following his story, Sir Bradley has not, I mean, the the media is brutal with him. <laughs> so having somewhere you can sit down with a trusted person yeah, right. to, to tell the truth. Yeah. He's just been burned over and over and over. So the truth will come out. It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, here's some emails that came in. Uh, what does ASO do for riders that are on the podium? On Sunday, you mentioned the buses were at the bottom of the mountain and Lance says... That hygiene is so important. Does ASO provide showers for podium riders? Hmm. Tell me Tadej Pogacar doesn't have to take a horse shower. <laughs> change in the regu- change into a regular team kit before he goes up and receives the yellow jersey. That's thanks from El Jefe in Ottawa. They do short answer, they do nothing. Right. <laughs> the the yeah, riders right. have their staff with them waiting for them. They clean them off, towel them off, alcohol wipes, all that. And then they get them ready for the podium, but it's, they it's put all a their fresh team. kid on. Yeah, no, uh, I, I don't know about the sh- I don't know about shorts. I'm sure the shorts stay the same. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Unless they've crashed, I'm sure Binyan Gear may put on new shorts for the podium today. So you could be in, you could be in a nasty chamois and extra uh, yeah. hour. Yeah. How yeah. I would, I would think they change them now, but who knows? That's what I call growing mushrooms. Yeah. You don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to think too much about that. But yeah, <laughs> well, I always kept. I just kept the shorts on. And now they make an area for them to ride the uh, trainers as well. So yeah. they, they cool down on a, a spin That's trainer. That's new, right? That is. is over the last four or five years, they're doing that now. I wonder who started that. I don't know. Did you? Uh, correct. I don't remember that. 2000. A podium cool down? Was I around? Huh? Was I around for that? Uh, did you do the Tour de France in 2009? Not with you. 
Yeah, <laughs> I've cooled down every day. Wow. People thought I was crazy. They were like, the race is over, just stop, just get in the bus. I'm like, I don't know. feels like now that I've had a few years in retirement to think about this, <laughs> Uh, my heart rate was 190 five minutes ago. I feel like I should. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Here's one from Mark. And little, they're kind of throwing trivia at us. What domestic stage race did Lance win just before going to the Barcelona Olympics? Domestic oh, stage God. race. <laughs> why, why do you listen? What's this guy's name? It's great. Okay. Let, wait, make, no, what's the person? What's the name? Uh, this is Mark. Mark. And, All right, and, Mark, you're just picking on me now. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let's show an image and maybe this will. I know, but memory. hold on a second. This is my, the, 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 he listens to the show. All right. <laughs> Clearly he knows that I don't remember anything. Now I'm just getting, even from the comments, I'm getting bullied. Torgila or something? No, 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 no. But hold on. Because the Olympics were in August, right? After Shoot. the tour, uh, July, August. Let's, let's start showing that oh image. My God. And see if that, right, right, there we see. go. Does this jar your memory? Uh, no. Okay. The, na the name of the race is, <laughs> uh, is I was penciled on top. Longs Joe Classic. Is it a stage oh, I race or one? That. No. This is the Longs Joe Classic in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, in '92. There was a TT, a circuit race, a road race with a mountain finish. And at the top of the mountain, a criterium. Really? I do not remember that. It's, but I should, because clearly I got the key to the city. Look at that key. <laughs> See the key I'm holding there? <laughs> I, I don't. Um, There's another one with and, the and, podium. And, and in fact, uh, uh, Bradley and I talked about that. Do you recognize either of these guys on the podium with you? Uh, Steven Swart on Steven the right, Swart, yeah. uh, on uh, the left. I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. No idea. But uh, we touched on that in the forward, just how he remembers everything and I remember nothing. And and, and it's not a, it, it, during that conversation, it actually wasn't a joke. Uh, it's real. And so, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> was it Mark or Mike? Uh, Mark. Or Mark. And, yeah. So Mark, Edwards, good, that's Colorado. a dang good question. And, and, and cool to see that old picture. Okay, send uh, any of your questions into the move at we do th uh, dot team. Oh, and one more thing before we go. Tomorrow's show, we have a very special guest. An unfortunate incident about a year ago, but uh, Michael White is going to be yep. here, the father yep. of Magnus White, yep. who anybody who follows cycling, especially yep. in the Colorado Boulder area, you, you knew the, this kid. Yeah, and I think it, it the, the story of Magnus's passing is – there's a whole lot of touch points for me personally. Uh, number one, you had, you know, what most would argue was one of America's best up and coming talents. So my, my touch point is watching George and his connection to Enzo and seeing, you know, I'm knowing, right, that I'm going to watch the Tour de France and see Enzo. I think there were so many people, including Michael, that knew at some point they were going to watch the Tour de France and see Magnus. Um, so that's one. Number two is just this relationship between bikes and cars and vice versa and how it, it, it's changing and it's getting more dangerous. I've done this my whole life. I'm scared riding the roads a lot of times. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and this was just such an unfortunate incident where uh, he was struck in Boulder um, and, and lost his life. And so I was in Boulder uh, uh, in May for my daughter's my daughter Grace's graduation from University of Colorado. And I sat with Michael and, and uh, you know, we're less, the, at that point it was, you know, less than a year out and just yeah. the rawness and the pain. It, it hasn't still, even I, gone, a, the trial's in December, right. still and, that fresh. And then, you know, the third and final touch point is just being a father of five. Like yeah. you can't, that's the worst scenario that any parent can imagine. You're never supposed to outlive your children. And so uh, he's going to come up tomorrow. They've started a, an initiative and in a, in a nonprofit um, uh, to to uh, to inc uh, he, he can explain more about it. But just sort of how we and we talk a lot about road construction and traffic control. But there are other things you can do uh, to remind drivers, right, that you're crossing over that line, right? Whether those are rumble strips or other things, where yeah. you know, because here, look, we live in 2024. People are driving around all the time, looking at their phones, looking at their fucking mm. TikTok, looking at all these things. Now looking at the road. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, there's a, one of America's greatest hopes is right in front of you and now no longer with us. So uh, the, there is more we can do. And so I, you, Michael can talk about this. And um, uh, so that's tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. All right. Again, questions for this last week. Uh, send them to the move at we do.team. Five stages left. In this incredible Tour de France. It's hard to believe. 
exhausting tour de france yep his boys are on fumes they are which is just crazy they left these i mean part of me is like there's just nothing they can do everybody's exhausted but yeah. i don't know see so who's got some matches left yeah so he's got uh, that's right there may yep. be some people that kept the yep. kept a few stashed away so all right everybody thanks for tuning in we'll see you tomorrow